Hey guys, how's it going? Capran here. So today I want to talk about Reno Jackson. He is a pretty powerful card, as you guys know, coming out in League of Explorers. It kind of changed the dynamic of the game in a big way, as before he came out, a lot of people were playing all-in face decks that had almost no recourse if the opponent just had enough health. And uh, yeah, Reno Jackson comes along and basically made a lot of face decks, particularly hate face hunter, almost extinct. We almost do not see this deck at all wherever you try to play Hearthstone. So it's a pretty interesting little guy, and uh, I wanted to talk about how he is doing in Whispers of the Old Gods. As I'm sure a lot of you guys do love the Reno decks and want to continue playing them and kind of want to understand what the requirements are for a card like this to actually be important in the meta. So the most prevalent deck for Reno Jackson is the Slow Control People refer to it as handlock these days, Reno handlock perhaps. It is a very good idea to build a warlock deck around Reno Jackson because of several reasons. Warlocks have a lot of cards that basically do the same thing, but are different cards. So warlocks have like, you know, three-ish, three to four mana board clears, like three mid-range board clears, they have like a couple very, very big board clears, they have several different ways to, to heal in addition to the neutral count, they have a lot of very powerful minions, and uh, they can just really get away with doing this because they have so many like cards in terms of what they try to accomplish. And they also have the best hero power to make this work. Um, if you know, if you can't really go through uh, too much of your deck, a lot of the Reno Jackson decks are very inconsistent because, you know, you don't have too many cards that do one thing generally. So even if you have like three board clears, you probably still need to draw one plenty of control like in almost every single game if you plan to win. And because you have fewer than you want, slightly fewer than you want in the case of Warlock, you really have to dig through your deck as best as you can. And, you know, there's not that many card, good card draw cards to begin with. Having to play only one of makes that requirement even tougher to get the card draw uh, to a high enough point where your deck is consistent enough. And uh, that's why we've seen a lot of Reno Handlocks. Reno Handlock has survived not only in the latter game, though barely in latter, a lot of people are playing aggressive decks, a lot of people are playing Shaman decks, and Reno Handlock does not do great against those, but in the tournament scene, Reno Handlock has also persisted. It's been a very powerful deck. It's made it to very high up in a lot of the prestigious tournaments lately, specifically since League of, uh, sorry, uh, specifically since Whispers of the Old God. And um, yeah, it's still doing very well in Warlock. There's a few other decks that people have tried. In today's clips, I want to highlight a mage Reno Jackson deck because it is possible. It is possible because with the card pool being larger and larger, even though standard restricts that a little bit, it, it seems that they're kind of producing less junk cards. And because of that, you have more decent options to choose from, and it allows you to use Reno Jackson more and more as a result. So that's really the interesting aspect of it. You are still able to make these very quirky decks. You can make, like, even even we've seen Reno Jackson, like Nazoth Pally in some cases. So some very weird stuff is possible just because of the variety of cards available in the game at any given time. So it's still a really cool card and it's a very satisfying card. While a lot of games these days are largely decided on whether you have control over the board and less so if you have like a burst heal, the burst heal still has a huge impact um, in that game. Now, the one downside of Reno Jackson, and this might be why going forward it might not be quite as common as you see it today, is there has been a bit of a rise, a bit of a focus on decks that kill your opponent in one turn, and this makes it so healing is not an appropriate way to actually recover or prevent the opponent's win condition. And uh, with those decks being on the rise, we'll have to see how the meta shifts, and uh, we'll have to see what is really, like, super successful. Now, some of these OTK decks, one turn kill decks, haven't really made it through to like the, the latter playability level, but uh, they might, they might. And if they do, you might expect Reno Jackson to be only a tournament style card, but still, 
I hope that doesn't happen. I hope I get to enjoy Reno Jackson whenever I want on ladder and have an acceptable chance to win. Fun cards in the game and wild cards and cards that really have have you dedicate your whole deck around um, are really the most satisfying cards and the most interesting cards to play in the entire game. And, you know, with some of the examples to come, hopefully you will agree. So check those out. For now, play those Renos while you still can. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. Yeah, actually, it's not too bad. The Dupe Doomsayer is interesting. It's a card I would always keep in my opening hand. So, and it's pretty important to the deck. I don't know if I can beat a Nazoth Paladin. I probably can't, but let's see. Yep, it's a control pally. My friend told you guys to spam. Doesn't sound like a friend of mine. <laughs> Seems like a pretty passive turn. Good enough for a block. Flame strikes really required. I think I'll go for a flame lance. That'll be my answer for Ragnaros. Scumbaggery. Playing around Kona Cold. To save Alastraza for like an aggressive push. That's good. Yeah, Reno works fine with two Doomsayers. I think I might just go for a pressure play. Uh, it's probably not going to work though. If I do Alistraza on him, I can get him to 7. He'll have to clear the board and heal. Man, that's pretty tempting. What's the most he can heal for? He can heal for 12. He'll be at 8, so he's going to go back to 20. I guess it's fine. Missiles. Wouldn't have been that bad of a play, but I don't really like it enough. I did this because he's going to swing with that true silver. And I want to get a card off of it. That belongs in a museum. Frostbolt plus Ronin was legit. Well, wouldn't have worked out. Let the pain speak to me. Reporting for duty. The might of Dalaran has arrived. Shit. 
I fucked up. It's too many cards. Fuck! This could be so bad. I screwed up. I totally screwed up here. None may steal our secrets. If I lose like Nazoth or Sylvanas or Polymorph, it's really fucking bad. Oh, I have Pol. Oh, okay, never mind. Or Cabalus Tome. Yeah, there's like three, maybe four cards that are really bad here. That's really fucking bad. Oh, I screwed up with the Ronin play, that's my bad. If I lose this game, it's probably on that. This is fucking bullshit. Well, there goes the combo potential. He might play Tyrion into this, but I can't really stop that, and I do need the value from my Doomsayers. Misplay. He should have played Tyrion. I'm out of cards. Fatigue damage is gonna start ramping. No Actually, not in too bad a shape. Yeah, he just drew so much. What was that? Doomsayer setup. Killed Sylvanas and he mind controlled it. So fucking unlucky, dude. Fuck me. I even played the Doomsayer. draw which is really bad but I think I need to push the board right now Thank you. 
He has a quality left. Might as well do it now. He can kill Karen next turn just by playing dudes. Can't stop him. Might as well not take this face damage. I think his last card is Consecration. Are you fucking kidding me with this again? Shit, I won anyway. Wow. There's a good chance I die here. Yeah, I'm dead to Consecration. Oh no, he's doing some retarded shit. Or he's playing Reno. Stop. might kill me here. I can't win? Yeah, I don't think so, but let's see. And he's gonna pyro equality so Sylvanas gets no value. He can't lay on hands though. He only has one heal left. Or none. Oh damn. It's the perfect 8-9. He misplayed that. Oh, it's seven. Okay. How much damage was he taking? He's gonna take six, right? So he's gonna take six and seven. Fifteen. I won. I'm dead if he has Consecration, but I win if he doesn't. He only has one heal and it's lay on hands. I feel like he only played one consecration, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's not like I have any other chance. He definitely has no more healing, so he has to kill me here. Damn it. Yeah, he had it. Eight. One HP difference. Ugh. 